Cinema. Welcome back to War with Cinema. I'm your host, Greg, your local metalhead. And with me is... Par the Collector. What's up, everybody? And I gave you Knives Out. Yeah, man. Uh, big cast. Yeah, big huge cast. cast just one. like the gentleman. And um, all people I like, too. Which is surprising, because rarely ever do you watch a movie that you enjoy everybody in it. Yeah, exactly. Um, I didn't care for the little kid. But Daniel Craig, Chris Evans, Jamie Lee Curtis, Michael Shannon... Don Johnson. He Lakeith, was great. Lakeith Stanfield, the guy from... Uh, yeah, he was good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Christopher Plummer. And then they have like the main girl. I haven't seen her in a whole lot, but Anna Del Armas. She did a great job. She was great. She was she wonderful. She was great. Um, this movie, man, uh, it's like you said, it's like Clue. It's like a murder mystery. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's different. It like, is. Like the way it's set up and then... He, they still find a way, like, to 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 make it interesting. You know what I mean? You know who the director is? Who? Ryan Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see that. I don't know why I didn't remember that, but yeah, the dude that did Last Jedi. Right. Yeah, he should stick to these. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, you fuck Star Wars. I know. I, I well, I, I you know, you know how I feel, man. I yeah, think yeah, Last yeah. Jedi was probably my favorite Star Wars movie <laughs> until how they did my boy Skywalker. <laughs> but other than that, it's my favorite Star Wars movie. Yeah. Um. He did do another one like this, kind of. Yeah. Um, this is one that was actually on your list, and now I give a reason to give it to you. So I'm gonna we're gonna do Smoke and Aces next week, but after right. that, I'm gonna give you Brick. All right, man. One of his like first uh, movies. It's uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt when he was like a kid. Wow, well, little Joseph. It's, Gordon a, Levitt. it's a it's another murder mystery thing, so you get to watch another one. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I love uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt. Oh, he's so good in this. He's a good actor. But. Um, you know what else I realized while I was watching this movie? Hmm. I love Jamie Lee Curtis so much. Like, she's she's like one of those ladies that will always be hot to me. Yeah, and, not and only I, is she an amazing actress, but like she's like when her like when I think of her dancing in True Lies, mm-hmm. like that brought me into manhood, bro. You know what I mean? Definitely. And fucking trading places, like watching her, dude, like. Oh. So even as a hooker, you're amazing. Even in Freaky Friday, with uh, oh yeah, dude, yeah. so hot. Yeah, and she's aged so gracefully. She has. She's aged very gracefully. Oh, gracefully. And a lot of people are like, "Oh, I don't like the white." Man, I love that shit. Like, yeah, she looks great, man. You know, my uh, the gray is starting to come in in my beard. I wish it would just come in all at once. Like I'm I want to wake up and just have a white beard. I hate this like slow transition. You want to look like fucking Santa? I can't yeah. do that. Uh, I'll have to just for a minute at that point. <laughs> I don't mind a little salt and pepper, but <laughs> I'm not going. For I just hate the I hate Chris the fucking Kringle. transition. Like I don't know. I guess I'll I'll have to deal with the salt and pepper for a little bit. Amen. Budget. Budget. I mean the roster alone. <laughs> Fifty million. Forty million. Close. Mm, not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Grossed worldwide three hundred and eleven million. You know what I thought was crazy about this movie that I did not know until I watched it was it was PG-13. Yep. I for, I, for some reason, I thought it was rated R. Fun fact, the Ryan Johnson cut down all the cussing to get it to a PG-13, and I think that's fair. It doesn't need all the cussing. Yeah. I mean, if there would have been like some more like gore or something like that, then you got more of a reason to mm-hmm. let it fly. But yeah, I thought it was clever, you know, well-written. Right. Great characters. Uh it like just kind of dark funny. Mm. Some of the like when she gives him the uh, I was just jumping in because this is what we do. We yeah. just pick shit out that we like. But right. uh, when she gives him the fucking morphine and he he's she's like, I gave you too much of the good stuff. He goes, <laughs> How much do you normally give me? And she's like, Three milligrams. He's like, And how much did you give me? A hundred milligrams. <laughs> he's like, That's a tad bit more. <laughs> And then he and then he proceeds to write. That's a really brilliant way to kill somebody. He takes out his little book. He's about to die, and he's writing out plot points for books because he's a mystery. He's writer. a great actor too. Oh, he was great in this movie. Um, I loved him. Did you ever see the one he did? Uh, shit, what was it? Had Mark Wahlberg in it, and it was about the Gettysburg, like, or what was it? Name? Probably not because I don't do war movies. No, no, no it wasn't a movie. I'm oh, sorry. It, it was about the fashion. Fashion is kid of uh, like some uh what the fuck was his name? It wasn't like a Rockefeller, but it was like a family like that. 
Oh, I see, I see. And the the great grandson was a fucking junkie, and he gets kidnapped by like the mafia in Sicily. In Sicily, mm-hmm. and they, you know, tell the the great grandfather like, "I'll fucking we'll fucking chop his head off and shit if you don't send us the money." And he's just like, "I'm not giving you a fucking set." <laughs> He's like a tight wad ass billionaire, you know? Right. It's blowing my fucking mind. It's like all the money in the world is the name of the movie. Yeah. But the family, it was a real story too. Oh, shit. In the 70s. And he plays the great grandfather in that one and he fucking kills it. Like, no, I haven't seen that one. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, it's really good. They're like, how much money are you willing to provide to get your grandson back? It's like a reporter and he's like, nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> and I remember the trailer for it. It was it was cool, and it was weird because uh, Kevin Spacey was in it and filmed a good portion of the movie. Really, and then you know his scandal, and mm-hmm. they fucking refilmed all of it with Mark Wahlberg. Oh, is that that movie? Yeah. I remember them talking about that movie. And yeah. Mark Wahlberg did it all for like you know the victims and shit. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that's crazy. It's an interesting movie, yeah. but that's uh, that was like something that I remember he killed it in. And but he's done a lot of good stuff, Christopher yeah. Plummer has. Um, over in the movie, uh, over arc plot of the movie, yeah. What is this movie about? Uh, it's about a super rich dude that uh, he writes murder mystery novels mm-hmm. and he's like the number one selling murder mystery novel guy for like the last 20 30 years. <laughs> and he owns his own publishing company and he lets his son run it, who's Michael Shannon, and he's like an idiot. <laughs> Yeah. Hilarious. He was great in this, too. Uh, I li- I was starting to realize I like Michael Shannon a lot, too. Oh, yeah. He's great. Uh, he was good in Boardwalk Empire, Man of Steel. I thought he played an amazing fucking Zod. Uh, Zod sorry. Emperor Zod. I think so, too. I-, I really like that part of that movie. I will find him! He's just so great. The Iceman. Did you see him play that? No, I didn't see that. I've watched the real interviews with Richard Kuklinski, the Iceman killer. Yeah. Dude, and that guy's fucking creepy as shit. He'll give you fucking nightmares. But Michael Shannon did a great fucking job being just as creepy in that movie. Mm. It's pretty good. I might put it. You know what? It's going on your list. Because it's a <laughs> it's a B-gangster movie, but fuck it. Ray Liotta's in it for about five minutes. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, dude, fucking Ross from Friends is in it, bro. It's hilarious, man. <laughs> but yeah. He, hey, you know what? Franco's in it, too. Is he really? For about two minutes. I don't even know how much he got paid for it. <laughs> He probably just walked on set. Yeah, I want that to be a fun fact when we do that movie. But anyways, uh, it's uh, his birthday. It's his 85th birthday. Yep. And it starts the movie like it's introducing him and what he's all, you know, what he's done. But he's old school. He only likes the books. He doesn't want to make movies and shit out of the uh, out of the uh, stories that he's written. Exactly. And his son's like, come on, Netflix is offering us a, a truckload of money. Like, yeah. It'll be great for your stories and your legacy. And he's like, yeah, well, you know what? It's not fair that all you've had to do is ride my coattails your whole fucking life. I'm going to take that burden off of you. Yeah. I'm fired. He's like, dad, are you fired me? He's <laughs> like, yes, son. I am. <laughs> it's great. Um, it talks about all the kids. J.B. Lee Curtis is his oldest daughter. And she is a daddy's girl. Like, she's got daddy issues, like, for real. Yeah, he gave her a million dollars to start up her, like, retail. Or, uh, and now realtor. she's, like, one of the most successful uh, realtors in, yeah. in Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. And her husband's Don Johnson. And he's fucking hilarious in this, too. Uh, I like him in Django. He was good in that. He's, uh, he does a couple good parts here and there. Um, I'm trying to think of what else he did. He plays somebody's dad. I don't know. He, he does look like a dad character. He really does, man. And like, you know, his daughter is the girl from Fifty Shades of Grey. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Dakota Johnson. But yeah, uh, great cast. And they get together on his birthday and uh, he's got a set. He had a middle son, but the middle son died. And I forget her name, but she is the uh, the wife of that son. You know, and it doesn't show, ever show a picture of him or anything, but she's like, of course, still heavily involved in the family because she's getting paid. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they go, she's like, she gets a million dollars a year for just being his widow, <laughs> and she pays for the for the daughter's college. Well, she had been double dipping. Yeah. And telling the old man that she needed the money, and then she was getting the money from somewhere else, or they were already sending it to her. Yeah, they were sending her saying, and then she said that she didn't get it, so she had to like 
you know, get it from them. It was double dipping. Yeah. yeah. 100000 a year. Yeah, he got, she got $400,000. Yeah. For, for, for just being an asshole. Right. So he's like, I'm done. I'm not, I'm cutting you and her off. Mm-hmm. And they said he was worth like $650 million or some shit like that. Plus the printing company and the house, which was like a super cool, like it was like a castle. It was literally built like, like, like if you were playing the game clue, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? There's probably ghosts and shit in there, but it was co- super cool. It had a bunch of little. I there. love that knife setup that they got. It was very like, that is the coolest shit ever. That's like the iron throne shit from game of Thrones. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like I want one in my fucking house. Now. Right. Would have been cool if they were real knives though. <laughs> Yeah, there's a plot point, like, he can't tell a real knife from a prop knife. Yeah. You know what? Like, Chris Evans did a great job in this movie, too. His, and I love his fucking name. That's the first name I've heard in a while that I was like, why the fuck didn't I name my son that? Ransom. Yeah. That is so a- badass, bro. <laughs> his middle name. Like, that kid's getting pussy. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> if your name's name Ransom, man, you're getting some ass, dude. And like, you have to look like that. Like, Yeah, you gotta just be- Blonde funny. hair, like, yeah. leather jacket, everywhere he, you go. He was so cool in the first like 20 minutes of him in this movie i was just like you know what man i don't even care about captain america this guy's fucking killing it right but uh but yeah uh he did a good job he plays that the you know the spoiled fucking grandkid that's just living off the family yeah they're like him and his grandfather love each other so much he's like i will fuck you up like <laughs> yelling at him <laughs> and shit he's like they had a love and a hate relationship yeah because he found out that um about the will right so the grant he's Cutting everybody out of the will. Uh, you said the actress's name. Her name in the movie is Mattia, I believe. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Something like that. Anyways, and she's his personal nurse, and her family is from Ecuador or Peru or something like that. And she's there. She was born here, but her mom is from there. So yeah, she's an immigrant. She's, she's an immigrant. Dead. She's illegal. And they kind of like make it seem like they help her out. Marta. Marta. What did I say? Matia? Matia. Yeah, Marta. I was close. Anyways, Marta. Uh, and you know what I thought was the only weird thing? Like, I don't know if it was a bit of a bad thing, but if you would have went for the rated R, it was kind of cool that it was just like a harmless, like she took care of him and he was just like a, a really good guy. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, if this is real life, he's the creepiest, dirtiest old man ever, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and that like young hot chick is just playing fucking board games with him. Yeah. I uh, worth how much money? Yeah, you're about to suck this dick. You're about to suck this old dick. <laughs> One of my favorite jokes from um from uh Lewis Black. He uh <laughs> he talks about how like he's like these rich people don't know how to live. He's like they keep buying houses, they keep buying cars, like dumb shit. He's like, if I had that much money, I would have my own personal ball washer. It's a girl that I pay just to wash my balls. <laughs> yeah, but seriously, though, when you're that rich, you can literally just have hookers coming in one after the other yeah. if you wanted, you know? Definitely. Like, yeah, but you know what I'm saying? But that would probably be the only thing that I changed because there was a lot of dark comedy in it, mm-hmm. um, the way they would say stuff. And, but uh, it was it's kind of sad, too. It is pretty sad, yeah. Because the old man thinks he comes up with a plan at the best of his ability. And uh, so what happens is she thinks she gives him the too wrong, much too morphine. much of the wrong medicine, and then he like she, come, he comes up with this elaborate plan so she can not be found out, and he slits his own throat too because she would have gone to prison forever, and her mother would have got deported. Right, and so he's like, "You're a great person, and you've taken care of me for so long. Like, I don't want this to happen for you." Right, and he didn't tell her that. Hey, when I die, you know, you get. This all this pretty much yeah. So the lawyer's reading off the will, and it's like it Marta gets everything. Such a great shot. All of them start yelling and shit at the attorney, and mm-hmm. then they all just stop and turn to her. Yeah, and she just backs the fuck out of the room. It's a great, great scene. So uncomfortable. Um, so then they come up with this plot point that uh, what was it called? Where the girl looked it up on Google. The uh, it was some kind of loophole. Like if you can prove that the person the person murdered yeah the person that was getting the inheritance right. then they f- are relieved of all of it yeah then the family gets all the money right is what it was so that's what they were trying to do is they were prove trying- that she marta killed their dad right not killed himself you know and uh 
And it's crazy because it's like, you know, this, that girl did such a great job because she's having flashbacks the whole time. And mm -hmm. when the old man, he's like, it's okay. And he just fucking slits his shit open. That's like, fucking brutal. It's it's crazy. So then you feel like you got the movie figured out. Mm -hmm. But then that's when it fucking, the crazy kicks into gear. Yeah, this is like the first, like, um, the first uh, part of the movie. Right. And when we... I don't remember what movie it was we were talking about, but we got on the subject of like earning your your fortune versus being it given to you. Oh yeah, we were talking about the uh, this, stalker movie. Yeah, this movie is the exact. This movie is the exact uh, example of, of what getting given a fortune mm. can yeah. fuck you, you know, do to you. Right. Because they were all terrible people. Yeah. And they all were just. You know, they're like, just leeches. They're just, yeah, bottom feeders just right. scraping off this old man's legacy. Mm -hmm. Like, daddy, daddy, fucking pay my bills, you know? And the way they treated her, like every single one of them when they're given their interview, to, they would keep forgetting her name. Some of them, yeah. Yeah. It was like an ongoing joke. And they would like, there was a, there was a bit where they kept handing her dishes as if she's a maid. <laughs> But she's the fucking nurse. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I remember that. Great kid. Great kid. Yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis is hilarious in this movie. You always had to have a game with daddy. Or you would not be his favorite. You know? And uh, Don Johnson, like I said, he plays her husband and he's a fucking idiot. He's hilarious too. <laughs> I'm trying to think of that fucking... I'm trying to think of that line, man, where... He, where they're standing in there and the uh i don't know if it's oh yeah it's when the old man catches him cheating mm -hmm. oh, he right, shows right. him on the computer and he's like he's like you're cheating on my daughter he's like no i'm not he's like look at it you're <laughs> cheating on my daughter fuck you i'm not cheating. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna tell her or i'm gonna tell her are you gonna tell her shit <laughs> And then it gives everybody, it does a great job of giving every character a motive for why they would have iced this old man. Mm -hmm. You know, because the first 20, 25 minutes, it starts with him, with the with the lady that is the maid. Uh, or I don't know, was she a maid? She was the maid, yeah, she herself. was the maid. And she's bringing up his breakfast, and he's got like two or three places he always did in the morning, and she finds him dead. Yeah. You know? And that's where the movie kicks off. And, you know, obviously, like, like you said, about halfway through it, you find out that he kills himself to try to save Marta. Right. And he gives her all this crazy shit she's got to do. She's got to climb out of the fucking fake window and uh, crawl down and run out Well, she there. has to leave at midnight, right. announce her leaving at midnight. Then she has to sneak back in the house, put on his clothes, act like she's walking down the stairs so they can be like, go back to bed, dad. Right, right, right. You know, to show that he was alive when she was gone. Right. And then... <laughs> And then she should be like scot free. Oh my god, the great grandmother or whatever, his mom, that bitch was creepy as fuck. I love that little old lady. She was funny as shit though. I'm Man, surprised you haven't talked about Daniel Craig though. He's like the shining oh, yeah, star in dude. this whole movie. Yeah, I just hadn't got to him, I oh, guess. See. Like, but uh it was funny as shit when uh, they were making fun of his fucking accent. <laughs> How did you feel about the accent? Yeah. At first, it takes you by surprise. You're like, oh, yeah. that doesn't work. But well, then you're he... British. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're not Southern. Be British. <laughs> <laughs> but then it kind of grows on you. You kind of get used to it. And you're like, oh, shit. Well, there's another there's another movie where he uses an accent like almost just like it. It's uh, It's got Channing Tatum and somebody else in it. It's called Run, Logan, Run or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. Well, he plays like a Southern prisoner and he's like a fucking idiot. But he uses a voice just like that of that. I so, thought he did a good job. Yeah, he did a good job in this movie. Mm -hmm. He's just sitting back there. And there was another great thing when they're all giving their like testimony, and they can, who the fuck is that? Yeah, yeah. Every single because he keeps of, hitting the piano to get them like back on topic, yeah. back on track. <laughs> it, the, you know what I'm starting to think? Like I might need to. That's another great thing because usually movies like this, when you watch it after you get the big reveal, you're like, all right, cool, I'm done with it. But like. I still want to watch this movie again because yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the, just that entertaining. And the way they, the way he sets up the story, like it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's kind of like, all right, I took all of it out of it for you, mm -hmm. but I'm still gonna give you, I'm still gonna fuck with you, I'm still gonna make you think. Some people don't like this movie because of that. Yeah. I personally liked it, so I think it was like a good 
I liked it just because it it seemed different. Like yeah. that's the first time I can ever recall seeing a movie, and the way they sold it, you know, that might be what could piss people off too. Yeah, when you sell it like it's a real mystery, but it's not like. The, well, then it did turn into a real mystery mystery right. because you realize Marta was set up. Yeah. To for these things to happen. Right. By who? Chris Evans. Yep. Chris Evans ransom. Yeah, he I mean, when he figures out the uh the the whole will thing. That's what they were arguing sets, about. Right. So he sets up a plan to frame her for murder so they can do the loophole to get her to get lose all the uh right. inheritance. And they'll all get their share. Right. And because Jamie Lee Curtis is like the oldest daughter, like she would have probably got a good chunk and that's her that's his mom. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I thought it was funny. He was he he, uh, he did a good job, and he, and he kept talking about his car. Like it was just a cool, it was a cool car. It's an old it's an old uh, Beamer, I think. Yeah, like a seventies or eighty. Yeah, it's got to be at least seventies. But it was cool. Yeah, he frames her. Oh yeah, then he ends up. You know what was weird? Like they didn't really. It, he it shows her injecting her with that shit later on in the movie. Yeah, when it's like, oh, he's the one that did it, but. When she found her, she had that big ass fucking spider <laughs> right on her forehead. I'm like, did the spider bite the shit out of her? Like, how did he know that spider was poison enough to kill her? Like, I kind of like, you know, that threw me off for a second. But no, he gave her the uh, morphine. Yeah, he because did this, yeah because he realized the other one wasn't gonna work. So he was trying a different plan where he was gonna frame her for that murder. Yeah. <laughs> and so she goes to jail, loses the inheritance. So right. Yeah, Chris Evans was ruthless in this fucking movie. He was. And uh, he befriends Marta mm-hmm. and they like, let's get out of here and shit. Because he goes to the will reading like he already knows, you know, like, and he thinks that he's going to still get it. And they're all freaking the fuck out because they're not going to get their money and they're mm-hmm. going to be poor. And he's just laughing. And then, you know, it's a great opening. He was he almost could have got away with it. Like, almost. Almost. He was there. But he should have just killed her. <laughs> I mean, honestly, though, like if he was trying to get away with it, yeah, I guess you're right. No witnesses. It's the only way. Even the old bitch would have had to go. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I I thought it was great. It was a uh, um, like you said that I thought I like it, but uh, not that I'm a huge, but I do like thrillers. I do like you know what movies that that keep you guessing a little bit. Mm-hmm. Those you know, are my favorite. That. That keep me on the edge of my seat the whole time. Exactly. And I'm like, I don't right. know what's going to happen, but I love the adrenaline. Mm-hmm. What's funny is the wife hates those kind of movies. She's like, I don't want to be anxious through a whole movie. I'm like, but that's the fun of it. She's like, that's not fun to me. <laughs> it thinks anxiety. That's awesome. Yeah. Everybody loves a panic attack. <laughs> They're all living room. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, nah, I, I, I was laughing. I enjoyed it quite thoroughly. And like at the end, um, Cause they're kind of like I was trying to think. I was like, who? Cause they did a really good job of like it. Really could have been three or four different people. Yeah, I thought it was for sure going to be either the mom and the and the granddaughter, or Michael Shannon, or uh, not um not Kath or not Jamie Lee Curtis, her husband. I yeah, thought yeah, John yeah. Johnson might have just like because he didn't want her to find out the affair, but um. Chris Evans' character didn't really stick out to me, but then when I thought back on it, I was like, oh, yeah, definitely was him. You know? <laughs> right. But, yeah, I thought it was good. I'd like to watch it again because, like, the way you said the thing with the piano key and shit, because I didn't think about that, like, that he was doing that to make them. Yeah, because I, I, the, I didn't catch it the first time, but the second time. Someone paid me an enormous stack of money. What's up with this foghorn leghorn asshole over here? <laughs> that shit was too funny. Yeah, he did. He was great. He was uh, great. Great fucking detective, too. Like, mm-hmm. I would watch a movie where he played that role again. Oh, good. Because they're coming out with Knives too. Really? It's an announcement. And it's just going to be him on a new murder mystery. That's awesome. Yeah. That would be cool. You know what? I liked uh, Stanfield, too. Yeah. What is his name? Who's that? The guy from Sorry to Bother You and oh, oh, oh. Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. He was great. He's I like him as an actor. He's you know, he's kinda like you would think he's not really a big part of this movie, but he, he plays that small role so mm-hmm. very well. And still there. You know what I mean? Like you feel his presence. Yeah. 
I think I just enjoy him overall because right because like, in Atlanta he's pretty fucking good. great in Atlanta. I don't know why I can't keep remembering this dude's name. With this, like, Lakeith. F- huh? Lakeith. Lakeith Stanfield. Yeah. Right. Okay. Because we've done like four fucking movies with this guy. In it, and, like, <laughs> we only did. Sorry to bother you. Really? Yeah. Well, I've talked about Atlanta. Yeah, we we talk about Atlanta a lot because he's so great. He is so great in that. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, Andy was in fucking uh, Lights Out or no, not Lights Out. What was the one that Key and Peele did or Peele? Oh, 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 uh, Get Out. Get Out. There you go. He was in that too. Yeah, he was. He was the possessed. One of them. Yeah. Hmm. Get him, Grandpa. <laughs> I just thought it was funny this movie came out damn near the same time as like the gentleman. The same like Well this movie I mean I guess they both do good. Yeah, they do both. I, I forgot how good. much we said the gentleman made it was like hundred cent- it was a hundred and a hundred and fifteen million, but it only cost like twenty five million to make or something like that. That's right. So they both did good. They both made a shit ton of money and Yeah, that but uh I would imagine this one that not everybody was taking the hometown discount. <laughs> To work with the director. Right. <laughs> because uh, Guy Ritchie, he's just got a way of pulling those guys together. And I'm excited what he does next. Yeah, it's kind of like, where do you go from there? Right. That's what I was thinking. Like, he can stop. He's got a couple options. Yeah. But what people are going to, I guarantee you almost 90% of people are going to say Sherlock Holmes 3 or... uh snatch two or something like that they're gonna want something in that in that stadium i would love if he just did like instead of doing sequels to those movies just do like their own standalone movie there are certain characters that i would lo- of his world that i would love for their like a bullet tooth tony movie <laughs> i could watch that shit seven days a week man. right i love that guy vince uh whatever his name is mm-hmm. but yeah yeah certain certain care brad kitt like mickey like, you would want to watch a movie about I know, Mickey. I do want to watch a Mickey movie. I just wish I could understand him a little better. That shit was even better, dude. It, you watch it a couple more times. Fuck. Just give us some money back and you can have your caravan. Who the caravan? It's got a fucking wheels. Hey, Fanny, see what is here. Here, if you take it out, you can go around there. I'll fucking fight you for it. Don't no fight Mickey. You know what happens when you fight Jesus Christ, Mom. <laughs> Somebody fucking get her. <laughs> when you bring a fellow like that, you're saying something without saying it, if you know what I mean. So he looks at him. He's like, fuck it. He'll fight you for it. <laughs> uh, so what do you give this? Uh, knives out. Knives out, dude. 8.5. 8.5? 8.5. I really enjoyed it. Like I said, I'll probably, I'll probably like keep an eye out for it. Oh yeah, I give it a highly recommended. Definitely worth a watch. Yeah. Smoking aces. I feel like the more, uh, um, because of the trend I gave you, like, I don't think you're gonna like smoking aces as much as you've liked some of the other ones. Maybe not recently. But I know it has Ryan Reynolds in it. Ryan Reynolds is in it. He's good. Uh, Jeremy Piven is amazing. Yeah. He sells that movie. Uh, Common's good in it. It's got another fucking big time cast. Ben Affleck, he's he's good in it for about two minutes. Um, even even uh, Ozark, Jason Bateman, oh, yeah, Jason Bateman's in it. Oh, is he? I didn't yeah. know that. Chris Pine's in it. Damn, for Captain Kirk too, man. He's in it. Hmm, I'm excited to check it out. Yeah, there's a bunch of people, dude. Yeah, Alicia Keys. Yeah, a lot of people. Looking oh, Ray Liotta, that. dude. Damn. Ray Liotta, He man. just pops up. He and... plays a fed in this one. Oh, shit. Yeah. You remember we were watching Mean Streets, the guy that played the bartender, the guy that owned the bar? Mm. I think he was Tony or Richie. Right, right, like right. That. He plays a mobster in this movie. Oh, nice. Uh, anyways, like I said, big cast. Yeah, it sounds like a big cast, so I'm excited to check it out. Oh, fucking Chibs from Sun Air, Sons of Anarchy's in it? I don't know who that is. I've never seen Sons of Anarchy. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? I've never see like I, this is when it's war with cinema because you like you're killing me, dude. I don't. I I started great, the first. It's like the Sopranos on motorcycles, bro. What is there not to like, bro? <laughs> I didn't say. Uh, I don't know. I watched the first episode and it was so. They're just fucking whacking people every other episode, man. It's fucking great, dude. You gotta I'll, watch it. I'll have to watch it one day. 
You can start from, you can watch any season, bro. One to six. It's all fucking amazing. <laughs> uh, speaking of shows, I actually did watch my new favorite show. What's this your new week? favorite show? Queen's Gambit. Really? Isn't that the one where the bitches learn to play chess? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, dude. Really? It's so good. Is it? It's, I have heard that. I have heard a lot of people say they like it. It's but so good. Like, it just looks like it would be boring as shit. It's really not. Um, It's a character piece. It's not about chess. Like, chess is like the driving force of the story. Mm. But you see this girl from a little girl grow into a woman, and it's just watching her grow as a person. It's amazing. Because she's like different actresses playing her at different parts of yeah, her life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there does get to that point where she starts playing herself but the actress is amazing she's the girl from split oh the the main one yeah okay it's so good there's only seven episodes it's a limited series they're not going to keep it going it's just it's a contained story worth a watch huh. it's really really good i have to check that out yeah i liked it a lot i'm trying to think if there's anything else i watched that i just thought was good or did wasn't good like I said, I've uh, had a longer week than usual, so mm-hmm. and not a lot of, not been very productive. Yeah, last week I was playing a lot of video games. Like I got back onto my video game train, and then I I realized I was wasting way too much time playing video games, so I had to take a step back. Yeah. And that's when I was like, I need to just go do something semi productive. I figured Queen's Gambit would it's, be. It's weird for me with the with the games, man. Like sometimes I'm like really into it mm-hmm. and I'll do it hardcore for a couple of days and then I'll like go a month without touching the thing. Well, I like to play like <laughs> super obsessive games. Uh, like I play World of Warcraft. Laugh yeah. at me for still playing that game, but you know, uh, I'm you're playing, sure you're not the only one. I I've been playing it for so many years. I'll dip my toe in there and then I get just fucking addicted and obsessed with it. Yeah. Uh, the new expansion came out and I was like addicted ever since, and I'm like, I need to take a step back. I need to get back to reality. Get your shit together, Craig. Really though, yeah. um, I got a new movie in the mail. What'd Excited you about it. What'd you get? Blue Velvet. Blue Velvet. It's with uh, it's a David Lynch movie. Who's the star? I don't know. I've never. I've actually never seen it. I, I just. Ho- I hope it's not the one I'm thinking of with fucking Jason Statham because that shit was terrible. <laughs> I think that was just called Revolver though. Yeah. Yeah, that movie fucking suck. Kyle McLean, it shows as the cast, but um, yeah. in the cast, Laura Dern, Dennis Hopper, came out in 1986. It's an old movie. I like Dennis Hopper. Yeah. I don't know. I just I've been getting to like collecting movies, and they had a special edition, so I picked it up. You know what movie that like I know that we always say that we're gonna do these episodes where mm-hmm. it's just like a movie that we both want to talk about, like. If I ever get a, a vote for that, I want to do True Romance. Really? Oh, 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 True Romance. I was thinking about True Lies. I don't know why, but True oh, Romance. No, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, we could do that in about five minutes. <laughs> like, it's it's good. I would for love to do a True Romance episode. I love that fucking movie. Me bro. too. I rewatched it recently with the wife, and she loved it too, which I was super surprised about. It's so good. It's so good. Another huge cast, dude. Mm-hmm. Doesn't feel like anybody is like phoning it in. Yep, and it was written by Quentin Tarantino, so uh, even crazier, right? And then the, the guy that directed it, uh, he did some great movies. Oh yeah, I think it's a uh, isn't it Ripley Scott's brother, Tony Scott? Did yeah, he yeah, do yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, Tony Scott directed it. He's dead now, ain't he? I don't know. Maybe. I hope not. <laughs> is Tony Scott dead? <laughs> Yep, 2012. Shit, that sucks. He had a, go- a lot of great movies. Yeah. Where's that damn... Where's that damn... Uh, whatchamacallit? Yeah, that's crazy, man. Because Ridley Scott, man... Dude, like, how does a family put out two badass directors like that? Dude? I know, right? It's like the Cohen brothers, but they do it together. Yeah, they do it together. Which is still crazy, like, to be as successful as they are, because, like, think about Oasis. Those guys fucking almost killed each other, <laughs> and they just did music. <laughs> These guys are doing full, big-ass fucking movies, you know what I mean? The Russo brothers yep. just, just did all, just did the craziest fucking superhero movie that, uh, that's going to be... I'm not going to say there won't ever be another one bigger than it, but it's going to be a minute, because in-game... 
pulled all of our emotionals, you know, just. Yeah, they did it right. <sighs> it wasn't just a big dumb action movie. It actually like had feelings to it. I don't think I've ever seen so many grown men crying at once and in unison, like, and nobody judging the other one either. Mm-hmm. Just like, I understand. Love you 3000. <laughs> Dude. My daughter said that to me, bro. Probably break down. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Knives Out was great. If anybody is on the fence about seeing it, because I was surprised when you asked me if I had watched this movie and how long it had been out. You were like, I thought you watched it. I was like, I never got around to it. Mm-hmm. You kept saying you were going to let me put it on the list, and we just never got around to doing it. Yep. And uh, I was glad you gave this one to me, man. Yep. This is a win for you. Yep. Well, uh, we're going to stop that. Right now, I'm sick of giving you shit you like. You think Brick? You think Brick's gonna be that bad? You think nah, I'm gonna nah, hit nah, it? No, no, no. I don't think you'll just like Brick. I like Brick because it's an interesting concept. These kids in high school, they are, they're like drug dealers, like gangsters, but they're in fucking high school, and it's shot like a, a old noir movie, huh. like an old noir detective movie. What? And it's just yeah, it's super like it's an interesting concept. But they're all in high school, but they think they're like. These like super gangsters. Is it like in the thirties or some shit? Though? No, no, no. Like... It's just you'll get the the, okay. the feel for okay. it. Yeah, fuck it, you know. It sounds it. Yeah, it sounds like it'll, it'll keep my attention. At yeah, least. yeah, it's it's a really good watch. And have you ever seen Lost? Lost the show. No, that movie looked like or that show looked terrible. Yeah, don't bother. But well, it has one of the girls off. from it. She was in Lost. Was she? Mm-hmm. Oh, she was also in Once Upon a Time. I've watched that shit either. Yeah, it didn't seem like your thing. Not at all. <laughs> you I know like, me, bro. If ain't nobody getting shot. Right. Why are you watching this shit? What or you, laughing. <laughs> what do you mean it's about Disney characters? I don't want to watch that shit at all. It was a Disney characters? Mm-hmm. Once Upon a Time? Yeah. Or Fairy Tale. Yeah, that's what fairy I thought. Or, I'm thinking of Grimm. Oh, Grimm, yeah. Yeah, like that's what I was thinking of. That Rumpelstiltskin and shit. The werewolf. I don't know where any of that shit comes from. Otherwise, he's just a wolf. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna need the fucking Snyder cut to come on. I know, right? We've it's, waited long enough. When is it coming out? It's March. They won't say the exact day, but if you're gonna release it once a week for a month, like I would imagine, it's got to be somewhere between March first to sixth. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck me. Dude. I know it's right around the corner, though. And like, it's like every day I'm reading a different article because I've Google searched Snyder Cut so much Mm -hmm. that anything to do, anything remotely to do with it, they send it to me on my timeline, on my feed, my news feed. And I read it like a sucker every time. (laughs) And uh, they just keep talking about so much shit that's going to be in this, like shit that we didn't see, shit, the plot points that like, they said it's going to be the entirely, an entirely different movie. Yep. Like he said, like, don't watch the Joss Whedon one anymore. I know, because he's like, only keeping, like, what, 10% of Joss Whedon's, like, shots? It says, like, next to nothing. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. And, I mean, what well, like, what if it's the greatest thing ever, bro? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what if it's the greatest super? Like, what if people like it more than in-game for some reason? Like, they hated the whole universe up until that point, but they were just like, God damn it, if they'd have gave Zack Snyder one more go. <laughs> He would have got it. And then they liked Justice League 2, bro. And then you get to throw Shazam in there and fucking Harley Quinn if you want to. You throw Suicide Squad, dude. Like, that would be so cool. Yeah. They need that for the DC universe. They do need man. that win. You know? Because but, they haven't made all bad movies. I like, well, you know me, I like them all anyways, but I think some of them were actually really well. Like, I love Aquaman. Uh, Aquaman was a is a good popcorn movie. Yeah, like, it's yeah. not a great like movie no, I mean, plot wise, yeah. but you know it's a great little like shut your brain off, look at the pretty colors kind of movie. I don't like Man of Steel though. Like, I it love was, Man oh, of Steel. That's my favorite Superman movie, other than Superman Two. The only reason I own it is because it has like sentimental value. Because my wife took me like before we got married. She took me on like a day date. Like we did all these activities and I was so excited for Man of Steel. That was the like one of the first things is we went and watched Man of Steel. So it holds that like sentimental value. Uh, but uh Yeah, I think I thought I love Man of Steel. And then Batman vs. Superman was so bad. I uh, made myself love that movie. I bet. I, I, like there's things about it that I like, but as a whole I hate it. 
when you watch the ultimate edition now i've heard people say the other end too like bro who's got three and a half fucking hours but right if you're a superhero fan like that that shit runs by anyways man i might have to check it out just to see because i think it will clear up the things it that does I don't bro like it, it fills in so many plot holes like yeah. i was like oh my god this movie would have been so much better if if people would have saw this, but people would have got out. You know what he should do if he wants to make these long ass movies? Do like mini series. Well, that's what he's doing. Like this is literally what he should have been doing the whole time. Yeah, just like start doing like mini series of hey, superhero guys, movies. Instead of giving me like you know a half a billion dollars to make you this big blockbuster movie, like why don't you let me do you like a fucking three four season of whatever y'all want and. You know, we can still do it on HBO or wherever. You know, mm-hmm. that way we can still cuss and kill and all that shit. Exactly. <laughs> all the shit people love Zack Snyder for. Yeah, he could be the new Game of Thrones, but for superhero for the DC. Honestly, though, man, and like he's created like in I think there's not anybody that I've seen in a DC movie lately that I was just like that person doesn't like they shouldn't play that part. Mm-hmm. Like Margot Robbie has been a fucking home run as Harley Quinn. Hundred percent. I thought Will Smith as Deadshot was fucking amazing. Mm. You didn't like it. Well, uh, I'm a big Will Smith fan. You're not. Yeah, so I'm not that, a huge yeah, Will Smith. That fan. makes sense. Um, everybody bagged on the Jared Leto Joker, man. I just think if you'd have gave him more of a chance, I think so too. If we'd have got to see the original air cut, like well, that's another rabbit hole to go down. But like. <laughs> I, I think it would have been. I think people would have liked it more. Yeah, people like to shit on it, but I feel like he didn't get a fair shot, and it's something different. Right. I'm tired of seeing the same Joker over and over. He was trying something different. You think that's why they gave Joaquin Phoenix the Oscar, man? Because like he did a different one than Heath. Yeah. But it echoed it kind of to me a little bit. A little bit, but it didn't take away from. No, no, he still did a fantastic job. I got that bitch on blue right now. I I love that joke, the mm, Joker. I do too. Um, but Heath Ledger was just so special. Like, I think he'll be my favorite comic book villain movie, like portrayal forever, dude. Yeah, it's gonna I, be hard for somebody to. It is gonna that. be hard for somebody to like top that. Oh, but let's do that right now, bro. Top five favorite comic book villains in in a comic book movie. In a comic book movie, yeah, comic book villains. Well, obviously, like <laughs> the the actor playing that part, not just like your favorite out of comics, like your favorite portrayal in the movie. Oh, I see, I see, I see what you're saying. Like me, number one would be Batman or, or uh, Batman, yeah, Dark Knight. Yeah, with the Heath Ledger. Heath Joker. Ledger. Um, after that, I don't really have a particular order, but it would be like Josh Brolin, Thanos. Yeah, definitely did a He's great job be up there. Um, I keep wanting to go to the Christopher Nolans because some of them are so good. Yeah. Like, Tom Hardy's I, Bane. I love Tom Hardy's Bane. Like it's fucking it was great, dude. So good. I wish they wouldn't have undercut him a little bit, but mm-hmm. what he what he had, he did good with. Really, honestly though. Uh, so yeah, I'd probably have to throw him in there. Catwoman, was... not Tom, not um Christopher Nolan's Catwoman. Oh, Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. That's just because she's so damn sexy. Yeah, but she did such a good job. She did do a good job. Uh, Jim Carrey's riddle. No. <laughs> I'm trying to think of not just DC either because Marvel, you know, the MCU has had such a vast thing of villains too. I'm trying mm-hmm. to think if there's any of those that I loved. Oh, old boy that did the Red Skull, uh, Hugo. Oh, Hugo Weaving. Hugo Weaving. That guy's a fucking great actor, man. He was. I love V for Vendetta. That is an amazing movie. Yeah. Natalie Portman is amazing in that movie, dude. I agree. Yeah. Uh you know what I just thought of on the way over here, too? And it's a movie I'm going to put on your list. It's not like a gangster movie, but it's based on a comic book. It's called The Losers. Have you ever seen it? No, I haven't. It's, it's got a pretty good cast. I feel like I've heard of it, though. It oh, yeah. Sounds familiar. It, it, it's got Chris Evans and Idris Elba and uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah, it was a bigger movie when it came out. But, yeah. But, yeah, I want you to watch it. Okay. Check it out. It's a cool little, little movie. I got Your shelf is, like, fucking stuffed of movies that you need to watch <laughs> yeah well you too you got some you got some There's so many movies that i want to get through but we have like a have to wait like i want to watch parasite i want you to watch uh snow piercer i have so many well, i melt with you is so good 
Well, man, I just felt bad, dude. When we were doing two movies a week, that was a lot on you. Oh, it was so much. You know what I mean? Like mentally draining yeah. to talk about that many movies. Yeah, like I just felt bad. Like, you know, so I, I yeah, like yeah. this way better. Because, no, we've definitely gotten a lot better. And I mean, really, we get to not only just the movie we're discussing, but like we get to do like go off on these fucking tangents, which are just amazing. Yeah, exactly. Like, whatever we want to talk about, you know. Yeah, I've noticed the quality of our conversations have gotten better but, since we stopped the two movie a day thing. Yeah, because like you said, it's it's a hard to jam pack all the what you remember from one movie into it. Right. And uh, I don't feel that like back when we used to do two a day, I would be like, man, I, I like that part. And I didn't even think about that. And exactly. I didn't even talk about that. Yep. But when we do one, you know, we could literally pick out whatever we yeah, want. Yeah, we flushed out a lot more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I'm kind of, I want to watch Smoke and Aces. It's been a minute since I watched it. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm excited to finally fucking watch this movie. It yeah. was on my shelf for years and years and years. I never just watched it. Yeah, I remember when this movie, I saw the preview for it because I was in high school when this movie came out. And uh, I was super fucking excited to go see it. Really? I got the bootleg for it after I went and saw it because that's how much I liked it. Dang. Yeah, 16-year-old Nick was a rebel. 16-year-old like, <laughs> Par was a badass. Right. Give, I'm, give I'm, me legal movies. <laughs> I miss those days whenever uh, movies would come out and I would just buy them. Like, never knew anything about them. I would just buy, like, random. Whatever new movie came out that week, I was buying it and just watching it. Yeah, you were telling me that, fun. like when you were working yeah, yeah. at Walmart. Yeah, and then I, uh, I came across some good ones, like Beowulf. Really, that was a pretty good movie. Wow, CGI, but I, I you know what? I remember uh, I was cleaning a the movie theater when that came out. Yeah, and uh, I just never sat down to watch it because <laughs> I heard Angelina Jolie was in it, and I'm just not a big fan of her. <laughs> You're not a big Angelina Jolie fan? No, nah, bro. There's like three movies I like her in. That's fair. It's like Mr. and Mrs. Smith. That's one. Yeah. See if you can guess all three. Yeah. Angelina Jolie. Oh, my God. Not Tomb Raider. Nope. No, I didn't think so. Fuck, no. I can't think of her movies. Off Gone in 60 seconds. So I'll give oh, you right, right, right. I did forget. I'm so obsessed with the cars in that movie that I forget there's even actors in that movie. <laughs> Not only that, man, but she's so fucking just like trashy hot with those blonde dreads. <laughs> And that part in the car where she's like grabbing the shifter and shit like it's a dick. I'm like, God damn. What about Hackers? Wasn't she in that? Yeah, that movie sucked ass. Though. Fuck you. I love Hackers. That's gross. Yeah, but you know me. I'm not a computer guy. Yeah. Like that movie is more up your alley. Like, if I would have saw, I saw that movie when I was like in high school mm -hmm. and it's an older movie. It's old as and shit. And I still don't get some of the jokes <laughs> that are in that shit because that's how much I don't give a shit about computers. <laughs> But, uh, and the third one would probably be, uh, talking Angelina Jolie. Maybe there isn't one. That fuck, there may not be. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Nothing that I just can't live without. That movie with her and Johnny Depp was fucking terrible. The tourist. I didn't see it. It looked bad. Yeah, bro. That should be a, that should be one of the movies you put in the fucking death box for yourself. Is it that bad? It's that bad, dude. I actually like Wanted. There's, I thought it was a pretty cool movie. Oh, uh, you know what? I can I can I can live through Wanted. Like it's not great by any means, but it's got enough good shit in it. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah but it's not her because I like it. But she is kind of sexy. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, James McAvoy and Morgan Freeman make that movie. Yeah, definitely. The Taurus is it really that bad? I didn't. I didn't watch it because it just didn't look interesting. You know, I'm a huge Johnny Depp fan, bro, and I almost didn't make it through that motherfucker. Dude. Damn, like, it was that bad? it was just so fucking. It was long, and there wasn't like a lot of action. It was almost like they ran out of money because they had to pay him and like Captain Jack money <laughs> to do that shit. And she's coming <laughs> off her big time movies, so I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, there's nothing going on here that I give a shit about. <laughs> And then at the end of the movie, like, the big fucking thing, and she's like, oh, I don't want to spoil it, because there'd be no point watching it. Yeah, right? But it's hilarious, dude. That's the best part of the movie. I was just like, man, that was the best joke in the whole fucking thing, and it's not supposed to be funny. <laughs> but yeah, anybody that saw The Taurus, you know what I'm talking about. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Going in there. You know what I was thinking about? I don't have to wait for you to pick from the death box to watch some of those movies, because I want to watch Ice Pirates, and you're not picking it, and oh. I'm getting upset. <laughs> Yeah, but I feel like that's one that's so bad. Like we gotta, that's gotta be my choice. That's gotta be fate's decision. I know. 
Because I will have to look for Peter, dude. If it's that bad, like if it's worse than like you know the worst movie we've ever seen, like I don't know if he listens to the podcast, but I always see him out and about. Do you, like Peter? Yeah. Do you see Peter? Oh. Yeah, he's always out, just out and about. Oh, I see him on his gram. Oh yeah. Yeah, dude, he's an explorer, dude. He's oh. always at the beach or going to see something or do something. Yeah, Peter gets out there, man. Pete's a cool dude, yeah. but he's the one that told me about fucking Ice Pirates. He's like, "Have you ever seen Ice Pirates?" I'm like, "Pete, I don't know what that is." He's like, "Gotta watch the trailer." It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. There's no way. Speaking of, so you know how I always talk about this fucking DVD group? Uh-huh. Yeah, they keep posting crawl. And everyone loves crawl. So you can eat shit. Steel book crawl? Yeah, right. Get the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> I really wish I'd have bought you that crawl comic book that day. Oh, that would have been cool. But it was so fucked. I mean, but like if it had been in any kind of condition, I mm-hmm. should have bought that shit. It's not like I'll ever see one again. Right. It was a once in a lifetime. Yeah, they probably made his fucking firewood. That was the only copy, Nick. <laughs> what if it was, dude? I would feel like shit forever, bro. Look online, it's going for ten thousand right, dollars. Right. Like a, just the cover. Not even the whole fucking book. I fucking love that movie. It's like the fourth ra- like rarest comic in the world. Mm-hmm. You passed it up because you hated the movie. I did hate it all the way, dude. There was some fucking good laughs in there. I have no kingdom. <laughs> I couldn't do it. The fucking the the horses, man. Like, oh, the fire horses, the oh fire stallions, fire or whatever stallions, the fuck they're yeah. called, man. That shit was great. Like I did say though, man, if they did that movie, rebooted it, do more modern, throw some actual money. It was the most expensive movie of the time. They just didn't use their money wisely. <laughs> yeah, bro, that's so crazy. When you told me that movie came out three years after Star Wars, I was like, wow, dude, somebody should have got fired. <laughs> no, you're not allowed to make movies anymore. I love it. It's so great. It's not, though. It like, is. <sighs> and then I posted my uh, my DVD of uh, Guyver because it's a special edition. Everyone lost their shit. I'm like, I'm so glad I have like people that love these crazy movies like i do the award for most inappropriate touching in a movie <laughs> the guyver ladies and gentlemen <laughs> you want to see a movie that's supposed to have mark Wahlberg doing or sorry mark hamill mm-hmm. the main star who's in it for like 20 minutes just phoning it in oh my god like i like after i watched that movie <laughs> I asked you, I think I asked you when we did the episode, I was like, did he have a gambling addiction in the 90s? Was he like, to pay his debts. Was he a cokehead? Because that was a very creepy ass mustache he had in that movie. And, uh, yeah. Maybe he was doing gay porn and we didn't know. Dude, yeah, it would explain a lot. Thank God he did Batman, the, the, did the animated series, bro. Saved his career. Saved his life. Yeah. He's still eating good, man. <sighs> So I was about two more of those, and mm-hmm. they wouldn't let him come back as Skywalker. <laughs> like people will roast our ass forever. You did Guyver two and three, Mark. One wasn't enough. You did two and three. You know, people talk about the the second one being better than the first Guyver. There's so. a fucking second one. Yeah, the Dark Hero. So I was thinking about buying it and making you watch that too. Oh my Jesus! <laughs> I've never seen it. I've only seen the first one. But people say the second one's better. <laughs> Jimmy Walker in it? Nah, I don't it's like it. a whole new cast. I don't want to watch it. They ain't nobody. <laughs> they poor Jimmy, bro. <laughs> they did him so dirty in that movie. They did. Hey, man, we need you to be the most stereotypical black man you could possibly be. <laughs> yeah, your only thing that you're famous for? Yeah, go ahead and do that, too. Your shitty rapping. Yeah, in case they forget who you are, dude. <laughs> go straight JJ on them. That way they have no mistake. Oh, that's who that is. Yeah. That movie was a nightmare. Yeah, it was Nightmare Fuel, but I loved it. Yeah, that that's why yeah, that's why you're into the shit you're into right there. <laughs> you been listening to that Lamb of God album I got you? I put it in the CD. I've heard I, I bought it. So the thing is, is I had a bunch of CDs back in the day. I had a CD thing like that and it was fucking full. My car ended up like blowing up. So yeah, I you told me this story and they got stolen out of there, right? Well, it didn't get stolen. The guy, I junked the car, but he came so early in the morning. My mom's like, here's the keys. Go take it. And I was like, did you get my shit out of the car? She's like, no, you should have got it out of there. I'm like, my fucking CDs were in there. I called him. He's like, dude, that thing's already like, it's gone. 
So I lost all my CD. So that Lamb of God CD was one that went. Well, you got it now. I did watch Men Who Stare at Goats. Did you? I did. Watched it with a wife. I should watch that. It's not. It's not as funny as I remember it being. Really? Yeah. I just remember George Clooney being like the best part of it. Yeah, he's out of his mind. Yeah. But. He could do it. It's st- it still has like parts. Oh, uh, what's his name? Oh my god, I can't think of it. Kevin Spacey. No, 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 the other guy. Jeff Bridges. <laughs> Jeff fuck, Bridges. Dude. Yes, he was great in it. Somebody smack me. Like, <laughs> how do I forget who Jeff Bridges is? It's been a long week, bro. It has been a long week for you. Fuck nuts. Oh my goodness. He was good in it. Jeff Bridges was like my favorite part of that movie. Dude. He- you know what? I don't care if it's bad, bro. I would love another fucking dude movie. You know what I mean? You know it's coming out, right? Get the fuck out of here, They're bro. They're doing a redo of Dune. I thought what? you knew that. Not fucking Dune. The dude, bro. Oh, the dude. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see that again. Jeff like, Bridges? Yes, too? dude. That would be amazing, man. It was like one of his best roles. For sure. And I think it's like my favorite Coen Brothers movie. Yeah. It's- For sure. Yeah, it's usually Fargo or, you know. Oh, I do enjoy Big Fargo. I forgot. I, I do enjoy Fargo too. But, oh man, and I fucking love Co- Oh Brother Where Art though. Mm-hmm. But everyone seems to forget about Burn After Reading. Gets swept under the rug, and it's I hate it's that. Because it's not the greatest movie ever. It is the greatest comedy ever. It's got some funny shit in it, but it's not their best. It's in my opinion. It's my favorite. Yeah. Brad Pitt's the best part I remember about that movie. I love every inch of that movie. It makes me laugh out loud. <laughs> He's in that fucking car, dude. His pompadour is hilarious, bro. Just the way he like just straight up gels his hair. He's like a fitness douche. Like he kills it, man. He does. Brad Pitt's one of those actors too, man. Like fucking for the generations. Oh, definitely. There's He's... nothing Brad Pitt can't play. Right. We've watched this guy play the devil. A fucking ghost, a little boy that turns into an old man or an old man into a little boy. I forget. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. And uh, fucking Fight Club. We've seen him play a split personality. Mm-hmm. We've seen him play. Stoners. Seen him play a superhero for 2.5 seconds. Vanisher, bro. Deadpool 2. Yeah. It counts. Um, watch him play a psychopath, 12 monkeys, seven fucking detective. Yeah. Baseball GM, this guy can fucking little Nazi hunter, dude. Like this guy can do anything, man. He can. He's one of the greatest actors living right now. Yeah, if you don't like Brad Pitt, like you just don't like America, you know <laughs> right? I mean? Like, go live, go live somewhere else. Uh, I know I told you this before we recorded, but I, I just gotta get it off my chest, man. Like, I can't believe somebody ran over my fucking mailbox, bro. <laughs> Who does that? Like. Yeah. Fucking cock smokers, man. Like, it's the only one on the entire fucking street, bro. You've seen my street. It's fucking long. It goes for a while. Yeah. And I'm the only one. And it ain't like my shit's right on the edge of the road. Like, you got to, oh, God, I almost hit that mailbox. Like, you're trying. <laughs> <laughs> so you said you think it might be out of spite. Who 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 has something against you that wants to run over your mailbox? That's the thing, man. I lived out there long enough to have any fucking enemies, bro. <laughs> like... All I'm thinking of is like maybe he was drunk and swerved off the road and it just happened. Well, I mean, some of those some of those dudes that live out there, man, their trucks are fucking huge. That's true. Yeah. And it's just a little two lane road, Mm -hmm. you know, and half the assholes think they're fucking off road dudes anyway. So I don't know, man. It's a fucking forty dollar mailbox. It's not the end of the world, but I got to go put another one up. But the thing I hate about mailboxes is like you have to buy it. But then once you put it up, it's not yours. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and spend a little bit of money to get some fucking spikes. <laughs> some of them fucking World War II fucking spikes they put on the beach type shit. Right. And yeah, bro, go ahead. Hit my mailbox. You're going to die. <laughs> because that bitch is going to be, I'm going to have, have that shit backhoed into the fucking ground and concreted in. Dude. I don't, I don't want to tell you. I just want to like, <laughs> every time you get a new mailbox, I want a couple of months. You're going to break it. Fuck it up. <laughs> You're a dick, dude. <laughs> Who the fuck keeps fucking out my mailbox? And it's God me. damn mailbox! <laughs> I start setting cameras up and shit. Yeah, dude. It's getting to the point, though, bro. Like, if one more goes down, man, I, I don't Because you know. haven't been out there long at all. I mean, it's been like, I don't know, two, three years now. Yeah, but still. Not, not, not to go through this many mailboxes. Yeah, exactly. Maybe one. 
but you went through two. Well, I mean, the first one, I know who the culprit was. It was my sister-in-law. Uh, she just fucking ran that bitch over drunk. Oh, I see. Yeah. She made it about six more feet, and then they made her get out of the car. <laughs> yeah. It was my birthday. Oh, yeah? Thanks. Happy birthday. Sorry about the mailbox. Yeah, my brother-in-law came and uh, put it back. He put a new one. Put the one that just got murdered. <laughs> he put that one in. <laughs> Should put a camera out there. <sighs> what? So I can see his. <laughs> that's all you see. There's nothing you can do about it. Dude, you want to know the fucked up thing? The most fucked up thing about it is, bro, when I went to bed last night at 10 o'clock, like, it was fine. It was There was a mailbox out there. Right. My wife said <laughs> when she came home at 2 o'clock in the morning, there was a mailbox there. But when I left at 320, <laughs> it had been brutally murdered, dude. It turned into a fucking ca- soda can, dude. Like, it was like it was, yeah, like I said, bro, if it wasn't personal, I don't know. Man. Just a drunk. It, it's a very big possibility of both. <laughs> but like I said, it's just not my life fucking week, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm afraid to walk outside sometimes. Like, oh, there's a fucking anvil out here. <laughs> Piano, something like that. But I think this was a good episode, man. Yeah. We didn't really, I don't know, man. I I, I I did enjoy this movie quite a bit, but like... We talked about it pretty much. And I, I did only watch it once, so I feel like if I saw it again, I'd have a little bit more of the... Yeah, you do pick up on a lot more things the second time around, I noticed. But there was a lot of great one-liners. Like, I just can't think of them right now because I'm tired, but like, there was a lot of great stuff about mm-hmm. this. So I do want people to know I meant the 8.5. Yeah. Not phoning it in. I did watch this movie. I, I kind of had a feeling you'd like it. Yeah, you, you did. You called it. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, I'm interested to see what you think about Smoking Aces because I think it's kind of like rock and roller. I think you could either really enjoy it or really fucking hate it. Yeah, the only thing that sucks is it's not Guy Ritchie, so it's not going to have his humor in it. So I think I'm I'm not going to like it as much, but we'll see. I don't even know who directs this movie, actually. I don't either. We'll save that for next week, I guess, right? Yep. Until then. Later, y'all.